This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Last one! Man, these things are so easy to find nowadays. Yes! Now, with this ultimate power, I can finally conquer Have the Gogeta world! Have Gogeta fight Vegito! <coughs> what? Oh, come on! It's the ultimate Dragon Ball question! Which fusion of Goku and Vegeta is stronger? Gogeta, the combo greater than legends, or Vegito, the mix who surpassed gods? Intriguing. They are in many ways identical, yet still quite different. Though in canon, they only have a collective total of three brief appearances. To truly determine who would win, let's examine all of their material. So that's Z, GT, Super, Movies, Games, Guidebooks, Toei's Twitter, even all the crazy Xenoverse and Hero stuff. Hold on to your Dragon Balls. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Imagine, it's 1995 and you're at a movie theater in Japan. You're there to watch Dragon Ball Z Fusion Reborn, and it's gonna be the most radical movie ever, dude! I mean, yeah, it was a little weird when Adolf showed up, but then it happened. Goku and Vegeta were pushed to the brink with only one option left. They merged into a single being of amazing power, Gogeta! And that would be the greatest thing eight-year-old you ever saw. Yep, you peaked at eight. Fun fact, while Vegito had already debuted in the manga two months earlier, Gogeta was created first. After all, the movie had been in production throughout the previous year. Two Saiyans, the proud son of royalty and the lower class champion becoming one epic powerhouse? This is the true potential of Goku and Vegeta. Easily a top five Dragon Ball moment. Hey, nothing beats the first time we saw Super Saiyan, but, but I think this comes close. This method of fusion was taught to Goku by the Metamorans, a mysterious alien people who we never actually see. But I'd guess they like wearing crop tops with inflatable shoulder pads. Anyway, when Goku taught this fabled technique to Goten and Trunks, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. This is the fusion dance. On top of an incredibly precise movement routine, this technique requires both parties to match power levels in order to fuse successfully. A literal personification of the phrase, only as strong as the weakest link. It's pretty easy to screw up, trust me. But if you nail it, you're the baddest mother ever on the planet. Though not part of mainline canon, Goku and Vegeta first use this to battle Janemba, a demon basically composed of essence of evil. Probably smells like cats. Gogeta defeated him in less than two minutes. 20 years later, Gogeta would become canon to conquer one of the most dangerous entities in the multiverse, Broly. Obviously, Gogeta's super powerful, but I think his most underappreciated skill is how he comes up with awesome attack names, like the Big Bang Kamehameha, Stardust Fall, Meteor Explosion, and the ultimate villain killer, Stardust Breaker. A fancy looking attack that completely obliterates all traces of evil within a target. That's how it took out Janemba in one shot. The guy was literally made of evil. Or cats. Weirdly enough, this is similar to Devil Man's Devil Might Be, which causes the evil within a person to explode and- Oh, you mean Spike? That guy's hilarious. Which obscure character are you gonna reference next? Icarus? Sour Man? General Rildo? Oh man, that guy's just one letter up from General Dill. <laughs> Over the years, Gogeta has achieved the empowered forms of Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan Blue, and even Super Saiyan 4 in his battle against Omega Shenron. Super Saiyan 4 is a totally unique branch of transformation. Instead of using Divine Key like Super Saiyan God, it taps further into Goku and Vegeta's Saiyan bloodline, giving them fuzzy red fur and teen goth eyeshadow. Goku has also claimed this form increased increases a Saiyan's inherent aggression. Though you wouldn't know it with Gogeta. He basically becomes Dragon Ball's Bugs Bunny, reveling and messing around with his foe any way he can. Until the fusion runs out. That's right, the fusion dance has a time limit of 30 minutes. This can be reduced even more if Gogeta uses up a lot of energy. Against Omega Shenron in GT, he split apart after about 10 minutes. Just more evidence that the amount of power Gogeta possesses is enormous. Even repeatedly striking Broly so hard that the boundaries between dimensions shattered like glass wasn't enough to burn through his time. Hell, he was only in Super Saiyan 1 when he did that. After going blue, Broly didn't stand a chance. 
Based on earlier in the film, Whis's reaction even implies that Gogeta could possibly take on Beerus. In Dragon Ball Heroes, Gogeta continues to prove he's one of the multiverse's S-tier fighters. He even defeated the Crimson Masked Super Saiyan Rose Full Power Goku Black and Ultimate God Slayer Hearts the God Hater. You, you know, those guys. And two Gogetas together could take on Fu. Just, just, just Fu? After all that, he's just called Fu? Dark King Fu, the artificial bio-android demon mutant. He has Saiyan, Namekian, Earthling, Majin, and Eternal Dragon DNA. Is this fan fiction? Hearts the God Whiner claimed Fu could become an entity akin to Zeno, that little blue baby who can erase a multiverse with a thought. But these Gogetas achieved even stronger forms than before. One was in Super Saiyan Blue Evolved, the boosted form Vegeta achieved during the Tournament of Power. The other was Super Saiyan 4, but not just any Super Saiyan 4, he was Super Full Power Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker! Ah. I think my tongue is permanently twisted now. These two forms fighting side by side implies that, at least in this iteration, both are similar if not equal in power. Ah, oh, Gogeta's so cool! And there are tons of people who'd think he'd win this matchup! In Weekly Jump issue 28 from 1995, the fusion dance was stated to unify Goku and Vegeta's spirits and draw out their power to the max. As long as a fight with Vegito lasts less than 30 minutes, the magazine says Gogeta should win. And then in the video game Raging Blast, there's a what-if scenario where Gogeta beats Vegito in a sparring session. But he was about to run out of energy, so maybe it could have gone either way. Though with his power and skill, it's unlikely any opponent would push Gogeta to his limits. Two of the greatest warriors in history merge together as one. What more could you want as a fan, and what more could you fear as a foe? It's the spring of 1995. A demonic menace has threatened to consume the world in chaos. Goku and Vegeta were pushed to the brink with only one option left, fusion. They used one of their most incredible techniques to become a merged being of unimaginable power. Does this sound familiar? But there wasn't time to teach Vegeta an awkward dance routine he'd ultimately despise. Instead, they used the Patara. Only the gods themselves could rock bling like this. That's right, the Patara earrings come from the Kais, the gods that supervise the universes. By placing one earring on each person's opposite ear, the Patara forcibly fuses the two beings together, no power level matching required. In this case, Goku and Vegeta fuse to become Vegito. Okay, seriously, Vegito? Couldn't they have a better name? Eh, it's not that bad. And remember, Fusion Reborn started production well before Toriyama penned Vegito's first appearance. So, uh, two I called dibs on the better name, huh? But still, shouldn't it be like Vegiku? Not like that's much better either. Why Vegito? It makes more sense in Japanese. Vegito is formed from the first half of Vegeta and the latter half of Kakaroto. This is why Viz Media actually translated it to Vegerot. Oh, that one sucks too. Okay, bored now. Let's talk about how he blows shit up real good. Vegito has numerous techniques that are entirely his own, many of which are, fittingly, perfect combinations of Goku and Vegeta's signature moves, such as the final Kamehameha, formed like Vegeta's final flash, but fired like Goku's Kamehameha way. He's got a spirit sword, the Saiyan shield, and the Banshee blast which, no, it's not the ghost attack you're thinking of. With Goku and Vegeta's powers combined, Majin Buu was no match. Super Vegeta was so friggin' powerful that even being turned into candy didn't slow him down. It just made him delicious. His level of power had transcended to such an impressive degree that he was capable of effectively ignoring having his matter entirely altered and his DNA eradicated. He continued on as the incredible fighting candy. No mouth, no brains, no organs of any kind, and he still kept slapping around that big pink ass. Uh, phrasing. Presumably, this is similar to how Vegeta overpowered Bobbidi's mind control, or how Goku broke through Hit's time skip with Kaioken. A greater power level can overrule basically anything a weaker one does. Though, to be fair, the Super Candy is a pretty extreme example. But Vegito's a pretty extreme guy, even for the Dragon Ball multiverse. He later got that godly blue hairspray and beat the crap out of Merged Zamasu, a double deity. Like a fusion dick measuring contest, but not at all close. Though similar to his dancing counterpart, Vegito's time ran out after he overtaxed himself. Which was kind of weird. Back in the day, they said these Patara fusions were permanent. Turns out it's only permanent for Supreme Kai's. Vegito's form can last up to one hour before splitting apart, but can be shortened severely if he goes full tilt. 
In the manga, Vegito formed after Zamasu fused and split apart when they expected Fuse Zamasu to have 20 minutes left, meaning he cut his time down to 40 minutes at most, though in the anime it was way less since he tried to quickly overpower Zamasu with a single attack. The Patara have their own set of rules. Unlike the fusion dance, this form is maintained by the power of the earrings, not the fusers themselves. As such, destroying the earrings ends the fusion. And if you slap the Patara on while in a Super Saiyan form, you can't power down while fused. So if Goku and Vegeta aren't careful, they can find themselves draining power when they don't need to. But surprise, Vegito's got into his own Super Dragon Ball Hero shenanigans, and he's got the full power red fur too. Look, Wiz, I think I'm having deja vu. Aside from Fu, he's battled heavy hitting threats to the multiverse like Cumber and Mechikabara. And just like with Gogeta, there's plenty of people who think Vegeta would win this fight. Daisenshu's 4 and 7, basically two Dragon Ball encyclopedias, claim that the Patara fusion is superior to the fusion dance. Old Kai said this too, that the Patara provide a greater effect. Though they both may be referring to what was believed at the time to be a permanent fusion. Not having to worry about overspending your time limit would certainly be a greater effect if it were true. But hey, there's nothing that can get in the way of Vegito's awesome power. Gods and demons alike are no match. When there's no one strong enough to save the day, then perhaps two will do. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can be overwhelming, and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. As a scientist myself, I've often been stuck in the lab into the late hours of the night working myself silly. Well, we associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead to us feeling burnt out, and BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Death Battle viewers get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Death Battle. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Death Battle. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. Hear my wish, Eternal Dragon. It's time for a Death Battle! This madness! Whoa, Vegeta! Am I really that much taller than you? Stuff it, Kakarot! You Gotcha! 
the wish. Though I guess we probably could have solved a lot of world problems with that. I suppose world domination can wait another year. This fight was incredibly close. Nope, seriously, how could it not be? They're almost exactly the same person. With a few minor differences here and there, like signature attacks, neither Vegito nor Gogeta had one single power that provided an absolute edge over the other. Except perhaps Vegito's longer time limit, though it's not so clear cut. Both have overtaxed their energy quick enough to end their fusions in less than 10 minutes. Time isn't the only factor, but also whatever is maintaining each fusion. Gogeta's body and Vegito's earrings. It's possible Vegito's power can actually drain the Patara faster than Gogeta's does his own body. Still, it's twice the time, and that definitely gave Vegito more flexibility and strategy. So more often than not, it's safe to say Gogeta would run out of juice first. Also, when Vegeta or Gogeta defuse from power overuse, it's typically difficult for them to immediately fuse again due to that lack of energy. But Vegito had another one over Gogeta. No matter what, he'd always have a very slight power advantage. Remember how the fusion dance requires the fusers to match their power levels? Well, the Patara don't need that. Goku doesn't need to match Vegeta's slightly lower power levels, so there's nothing stopping Vegeta from combining the full sum of their parts. Ah, oh, poor Vegeta. You'll get your day in the sun one day, buddy. Oh, who am I kidding? This might be what Old Kai was referring to when he said the Patara had a greater effect. But hey, could Gogeta have destroyed the earrings? Nope! He would have had to be able to overpower Vegito first, like how Goku could only destroy Kefla's earrings after he reached Ultra Instinct. Remember, when comparing levels of power in Dragon Ball, the greater one can overrule almost anything the weaker one does. The earrings likely tend to be protected by the user's key aura, similar to their clothing. The only time we've ever seen Patara damaged or specifically targeted are when the wearer is overwhelmed or in a vulnerable state. If any stray key blast could destroy them, we'd have a lot more broken earrings by now. Lastly, there's some debate over their personalities. In their first appearances, Vegito seemed rather cocky and playful against Boo, whereas Gogeta was far more deliberate against Janemba, and thus far more successful. However, these are not core personality traits, and assuming so would be inconsistent with Vegito's serious fight with Zamasu and Gogeta's more brash fights with Broly and Omega Shenron. Context is key. As far as personality and mental ability goes, Gogeta and Vegito are practically identical. In the end, Vegito's higher power level, no matter how slight it was, made a big difference in protecting and maintaining his longer, more flexible time limit. Gogeta was gonna need meta more than that to beat Vegito. Sorry, Wiz, I know that pun was potarable. Wait, shut up. Earth's Dragon Balls give two wishes, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, Shinron, I wish for you to fuse me and Wiz. <laughs> the winner is Vegito. Thanks for watching, and doubly thanks to our channel members for supporting us this year. Hope you've been enjoying the extra perks and content. We've got a bunch of new stuff in the works for you. If you aren't a champion, click that join button and give it a shot. Also, Season 10 of Death Battle is coming soon, including two matchups chosen by our champions. Let's see what you picked.